بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله My dear respected brothers and sisters today insha'Allah ta'ala my topic or the topic of today's khutbah will be stop harming people's honor you are harming yourself that's how I put it it's very difficult because there's so many things uh, elements to talking about the honor and the dignity of a Muslim brother and a beautiful surah surah al hujurat gives us many shows us many ways or how to be with our fellow Muslims and this surah there are many benefits from it inshallah ta'ala which I'll bring forward today in the short time that I have so my dear brothers and sisters we begin by saying fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we remind ourselves as we do in every khutbah when we come and hear the Imam speaking we remind ourselves because the waswas of shaitan comes all the time nobody is infallible nobody is perfect right and we need to remind ourselves and today is another reminder so we say we begin by saying we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we remind ourselves taqwa Allah azza wa jal and let that taqwa be manifested in our behavior in every aspect of our lives because piety and taqwa is not something that we just learn and memorize it's something that we apply in all of our affairs and this surah beautiful surah that you must study insha'Allah ta'ala surah al-hujurat covers many of these aspects in how to be with the brothers and sisters because the surah was um, revealed at the end when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was in Medina and the people were living together and we're just like that we're a society here living together so how should we be so we need to remember that if we do not act upon this then we can't ward off the evil and we can't keep away immorality because the distinguishing character of a Muslim community is compassion is support and solidarity and empathy and love and harmony living in peace this is how we should be there shouldn't be any enmity there shouldn't be any anger there should be always love for the other bro brother what you love for yourself you can't be a true believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself and what do you want for yourself you want all the good things if you want good things we have to think of our brother and the Islam teaches about brotherhood as I'll mention so much uh, in this in this um, in this surah it is mentioned so with regards to love in brotherhood and sisterhood we should be mentioning good qualities we should avoid slander we should avoid slander we shouldn't undermine somebody we should have mutual mutual respect we shouldn't degrade the honor of a brother subhanallah and unfortunately it is very easy to fall into this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention in the surah you will see and the dignity will follow that so we shouldn't have grudges and we should be ruhama baynahum we should be adhillatin alal mu'mineen we should have mercy towards one another we should be uh, we should have that kind of humbleness together be humble towards one another so what is the shield and this fence that Allah has given us in society to protect and what is the, what are these protective measures remember all of these things that we have mentioned the brotherhood and things that we are ordained to do there are also things that we have been prohibited to, to keep away from because that's when the cracks will come in society and we have problems coming in so there are many chronic problems what do we mean by chronic it's very it, it comes all the time then we fix it and then it comes back all the time <laughs> right and what are those problems except who Allah has had mercy on and these are mentioned in these ayat that I'm going to bring forward in front of you 
And they are affecting individuals, it, they're affecting families, they're affecting the community. And we need to remember that those engaging in these things, right, these vice, these bad things, then they either need reminder, because we all need reminders, don't we? And we also need guidance from Allah subhanahu. We make dua for guidance, also, for thabat. And we also maybe have weak morals, or our deen is not, we're not close to the deen enough. So we need to remember to come closer to the character, the shaksiyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qudwa. The best example, and the Qur'an, he is the walking Qur'an, the walking Qur'an. So in short, my dear brothers, to build a, uh, to, for the building blocks of a healthy Muslim community, not just those who are attending today, but everybody, in our families, in our home, our brothers and sisters, in our workplace, there are certain parameters and limits. And this Surah Al-Hujurat mentions many parts of this. Remember, we're respecting it out of the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Because Rasulullah, if we hate somebody, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that we have to love our brother. Right? So therefore, if we hate, then we're going against what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showing us. So we say we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yet we are doing these actions. How is that love for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in itself? So we need to think about this, my dear brothers and sisters. So the subject matter are of five, very simply, in short. The first five verses of this surah, Surah Al-Hujurat, we have been taught manners, that the Muslims are taught the manners that they should ob observe with regards to Allah and His Messenger. I'm not going to touch into that. The next part, then they have been given the instruction that it is not right to believe in every news you find. Everything you hear, be it gossip, anything, don't believe it straight away. Right? And don't act upon it either. But do your checks. Do your checks. Verify that information. Did you hear this, my dear? You, you know, the usual thing is, did you hear? Oh, did you hear about that brother or sister? But how much of you, how many of us went and checked? And then when it spreads to another person and another person, what happens? Then a lie has been brought up. Iyaka wa dhan. Be careful about su dhan. Having that false assumption. And then the third part is that we should have, we have been told, the attitude that a Muslim should have in case there is some kind of argument or something. If there's a dispute, it happens, right? How do we deal with this? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands making peace with each other. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا So if there are two groups of people that are arguing or fighting, then you should come and reconcile and fix this problem. Muslims should do this, work together. If there's group A, group E, there should be a group C. A and B are fighting each other, group C should come and fix the problem. Right? And that is the teaching of the Qur'an. So, even after this in the ayat, after, فَإِن بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيءَ إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ And it continues. That if even after this you try to reconcile and you made a peace treaty, you said, okay, we'll agree upon this. Then that person still broke this rule. Right? Then what happens? Then both of you, group B and C, should get together and you should stop it completely. Because that is an active aggression. But subhanallah, after that, we should remember that in the hadith of Sahih, in which Anas states, عنه, that the Prophet وسلم, said, Nasru, unsur Help your brother whether he's an oppressor, he done something wrong, or he is oppressed. So he said, I asked, O oh Messenger of Allah, is it right if I help him even if he is an oppressor? Should I help him? He said, min dhulmi nasruka ayyah. If you stop him from doing more dhulm, then yes, that is 
uh, a help towards that, towards him. So we should come back. For in fa'at, if you come back to the good, then there should be, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mubashira straight after that talks about qist. For in fa'at, fa aslihu baynahuma bil adl wa aqsitu. Bil adli wa aqsitu. Allah used two here. Al adl is for in the courts and open. We're talking about the open transparency. Okay? But. Um, Aqsitu, this qist word is in all affairs of your life. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this? Very simply. Because if that group came to help, right, they're together now. Uh, then the second time when that person went, group A went and did something against, went, uh, went and did something again against the peace treaty, then what happens? These two have gone and there is a bias. There could be a bias. There could be that now there's two. There's no third par party now. There's two. That's why Allah mentioned Al Adli wa Aqsitu. Again, re emphasizing being fair the second time when you're trying to solve a problem. So, all of these things Allah is bringing through our daily lives, things that are going on in your lives, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, you come to a situation, two brothers or two sisters, or brother and sister, or whatever in the family, there are two groups, and they have an argument, or they have an issue that needs to be clarified, solved, a problem. There's been a misunderstanding. You need to work towards solving those things and not leaving it behind, so that others, so that others think and lower their dignity. And it opens the doors to so many things, as in the ayat that are coming, like backbiting, like surah al -dhan, like having bad suspicion, bad as uh, assumption of people. These kind of things. Shaitan will come just to say, let's start talking. Let's start saying. What did you hear about this person? I think that person. You see somebody walking in the streets, right? A brother, very good brother. He's walking, he's known to be righteous. And then he, you see him with a beer can, can of beer. Astaghfirullah. Subhanallah, this brother, did you see the brother? No, from the far you, distance you saw. This brother could be, have an excuse, a valid excuse. But the naql, mubashira, the mind is saying, what? Something evil. And it wants to say something, so you can do the naql of the kalam, so you can spread that. And the moment you spread that, you've done some, you've fallen into sin. And it is very dangerous. My dear brothers, it could be that he picked up that can so that he could put it in the bin. A simple thing like that. He picked the can up to put it in the bin. And it's, in, it's rife. Everywhere we have this problem. Thinking good of another person is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husna dhan bil muslimin. Wala tusi'u dhan. Do not think bad of a brother or sister. It creates problems. So, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Remember, when you do qist and when we are fair with everybody, we have to be fair in our trade. We have to be fair with our children. We have to be fair in all aspects. If we are getting paid, we must work fully. We must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even those that are studying, young people who are studying, your parents are paying fees. You must study hard. And this is one of the biggest problems when you talk about, Allah is talking here about qist about being fair, about equality, uh, about being fair and justice. The most of the problems in this world are due to what? Whether it's political, economic, social, all injustices. Social, race, class, whatever it is. Injustice is going on. We as a community must be fair first. We have to be all fair. This is very important. So my dear brothers, there are many ayat in this. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, believers, the believers are about a brotherhood, like siblings. الْمُسْلِمُ أَخُ muslim In the hadith, لَا يَظْلِمُهُ وَلَا يُسْلِمُهُ He doesn't, a Muslim is a brother of a Muslim. He doesn't oppress him. And he doesn't uh, leave him, forsake him. You always think about your brother. First, وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ Allah is always helping a brother. Who is always, uh, Allah helps a servant as long as he is helping another brother, another servant. 
remember to help one another. So all of these ahadith, many I'm sure you know, Al-Mu'minu Kalbunyan, Prophet Sallallahu held his hands together. Yashuddu ba'duhum ba'da. They hold together and they're like a foundation for another brother. And then it continues. So remember that we should, if we have this brotherhood, then we can't have what's next in this surah. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَسْقَرْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَوْمٍ عَسَاء أَنْ يَكُونُوا خَيْرًا مِنْهُمْ وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِنْ نِسَاءٍ عَسَاء أَنْ يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهُمْ مِنْهُمْ وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ This khutbah is not sufficient for this surah. My dear brothers and sisters, this ayah talks about the groups of people who are just joking, always making fun, or they're scorning, or they're jeering, or they're mocking, or they're making fun of, looking down. And unfortunately, society and the things around us automatically force us to do these things or be involved in it, meaning listening to it. Because if you're listening to it, you're part of that. You're sharik, you're part of it. You have nowadays with social media, you have news, you've got tabloids, you have programs specifically talking about, did you, about these people and making fun of them. It's a joke, everything's a joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, oh you believe, do not make fun of one, of, of one another. Because the moment you are doing that, you are not having love for that brother. And there is a direct link of pride. Pride is a byproduct of this. And it has two meanings. And it means basically that you're val valuing yourself so highly. You think yourself bigger than the other. You are, you know, these people are little. I can make fun of them, I can say something about them. And it starts from the beginning. What happened? The angels were asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prostrate to Adam. And what he did, what did um, Iblis do? Aba was takbar. He became proud. He said, I'm better than them. When you are calling people names, or when a person, a Muslim, jokes, you don't know that joke. Could, could actually be a problem for you in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you say to that person, okay, actually, I don't mind, you can call me names. Because afterwards it says, وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ Al-Qab are nicknames. And before that it says, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ It's constantly telling you good things, uh, to avoid doing these things. It's vice, to cause harm. You don't know that person, later on, sometime in his, later on, He's saying to you right now, I don't mind. You can call me this name. It's okay. You can call, him, call me a name. Maybe in Yawmul Qiyamah, that person is in need of some good deeds. And you know what? They will be, so now they will be bringing this up. He called me these names. The tongue, my dear brothers and sisters, the tongue, it's, a, it's, it's so dangerous. It's so, it can bring you so much to Jahannam. And very... And the, these ayat is not enough for me to cover now. But just to mention that Muslims always must remember this slander of words and actions, we must avoid it at all, uh, at all costs. At all costs. And then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu jitanibu kathiran min al-dhan, inna ba'da al-dhan ithmun wa la tajassasu, wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da, ayuhibbu ahadukum an yakula lahma akhihi maytan fakarihtumu, wa attaku Allah, inna Allah tawabur rahim. Subhanallah, the prohibition, oh, Allah is prohibiting us, and telling us, forbidding us, to make unfounded suspicion. Suspicion, as I mentioned before, negative presumptions. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, never think ill of the word that comes out from your believer's mouth, uh, brothers, believing brother's mouth, as long as you can find a good reason to for it, or excuse for it. Make excuses, my dear brothers and sisters. Make excuses for your brother and sister. Because that person could change one day and be better than you. يَهْدِيَهُ that maybe that Allah will give guidance to that brother or sister. Don't straight away, do not come to false assumptions. Very careful. إِيَّاكُمْ وَظَنْ فَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ Hadith Rasulullah 
that beware of suspicion for suspicion is the worst of false tales worst it's happening all the time and we should remember wala tajassasu wala tajassasu allah says in the quran after straight after this what happens when you have a little bit of doubt you start spying start thinking allah is saying do not spy do not get involved in other people's business people have private lives if there's a mobile here or an email open or something here of somebody else's there might be things that that person you might open things awrat and nurse private things you can't open these things you have to keep it hidden we are only judged from the zawahir how people are from their outside you don't judge their hearts allah is the judge of the hearts this is very important we are quick to judge and commentate very careful when you say here, yeah, when Allah says here, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ مَشَنَبُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الظَّنِّ إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمٍ Keep away from suspicion. Indeed, some of this is a sin, a great sin. إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمٍ وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And do not spy. Do not follow. مُتَابَعَ Following. What is that person doing? Did you see that? Always wanting to know about other people. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Because for if you have done this, if you follow the next thing, what happens automatically in San, what does he do? He says something about that person. It, it could be true, it could be not true. It could be true, it could be not true. And both of these are very, very serious. Because Allah says, if it's true and that person does not like it, right, then. Allah has given a parable. Allah has given a parable. أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ Do you want to, is it, do you want to eat the flesh of your dead brother's meat? This is how it is. Subhanallah. People, it's, it's, it's become عَادَة, norm, talking about others. Even if it's true, it's not allowed. Because he doesn't like it. He or she doesn't like it. And if it's not true, it's namima. It's worse, it's slander. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. So, nas'alullah al-afwa wa al-afiyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for protection from this. And we remember the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La taqata'u wa la tadabaru wa la tabaghadu wa, ta wa la tahasadu wa kunu ibadallahi ikhwana. So these um, about not cutting relations, not having anger towards one another, not going against one another, and be brothers together. And there's so many things in this hadith, in this um, uh, surah that you need to look into, inshallah. Thereafter, we just need to remember, my dear brothers, that if there is something, go and verify it. As I said before, Go and verify, find proof, inshallah ta'ala. And do not be part of the qila wal qal. Inna Allah yardaha lakum thalathan wa yahkrahu lakum thalathan. Indeed, Allah wants from you three things and dislikes three things. And one of those is qila wal qal, gossip. Be careful, my dear brothers and sisters. And finally, um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards the end of the, uh, this part, he says, Jalla wa ala, he says, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. That, O oh mankind, we have made you, created you from male and female and made you into nations and tribes. Limadha? Why? Li ta'arafu. Forget all of these races. We are this and we are that. We're all Muslims, brothers. لِتَعَارَفُوا So that you may know one another. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Indeed, the best of you are whom? In the eyes of Allah, the one who has the most piety. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانًا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله وعلموا أن الشرع الحكيم قد حرم الغيبة 
لما فيه من أضرار كبيرة وأخطار جسيمة على الفرد والمجتمع يقول تعالى ولا يختب بعضكم بعضا أي يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموا واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم وقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أتدرون ما الغيمة قالوا الله ورسوله أعلم قال ذكرك أخاك بما يكره قيل أفرأيت إن كان في أخي ما أقول قال إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد اختبته وإن لم يكن فيه فقد بهت نعم إن حرمة المؤمن عند الله عظيمة فلا يجوز لأي إنسان أن يعتدي, يعتدي عليه في دمه أو ماله أو عرضه فاللسان سلاح ذو حدين إذا حفظه صاحبه كان من أعظم أسباب النجاة ومن أسباب دخول الجنة أيها الإخوة الكرام إن الله تعالى أمركم بالصلاة والسلام على النبي فقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من صلى عليه صلاة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورضى اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة الأكرمين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما خرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة لنا ولوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا وللمسلمين أجمعين واللهم وفقنا للأعمال الصالحات وترك المنكرات اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم وادعوه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا للصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر